All right, so today uh, we are going to take sort of a, a little bit of an overview of the whole concept of um, what this class is, in that we've talked about a little bit about HTML on the first day. We've talked a couple of days about WordPress. Those are the tools to create a website. Um, and this class, in theory, is that we talk a lot about how do we get traffic to a website. So we had a, a few days on basic concepts of web design, but obviously there's other classes that really focus on that, CIS 123, CIS 152, etc. And so what this class focuses on is how to get traffic to that website. Um, part of that is to develop a strategy, because really you're not going to get that far if you're just simply trying things here and there. What about if I do this? What about if I do that? Um, so I've got an assignment that gets us thinking about what is our strategy? How are we going to get traffic to our website? So if you go to the assignments section on Blackboard here, you're going to see um, a new item here, profile and marketing. This is a little kind of like a folder because I've got a few items for you here. So you want to click on profile and marketing. And I've got company profile marketing strategy. Both of these are the third assignment. Both of these are going to be due uh, a week from today. And there's in each one of them, there's a, a little instruction sheet and then the actual thing that you have to fill out. We're going to look at this together right now. I'm going to explain what it all means. But this is uh, a company profile marketing strategy. If I get hired as a web designer to make a website for a company, mm -hmm. the first question is, well, what are you going to do? Or how are you going to do it? So we need to, my company needs to know what that company is all about, what their products are, their demographics, all of those things. So that's what this assignment is about. It's in two parts. If you look first at the PDF, so notice we've got 03 company profile and 03 company profile template. And we've got 03 marketing strategy PDF and 03 marketing strategy template. The one that you're going to fill out, the one that you're going to complete, is the one that has the, the, the DOCX, the the word document, but the instructions. If we look at the first one, company profile PDF. The first thing that you need to do is define who you are as a company. Before you can sell the services of your company to clients, you must know your company inside and out. Your social media strategy is based on various aspects of your company profile. You will implement these aspects in all your online endeavors. In this assignment, you will clearly define what your company is and what it does. So, uh, one of the big answers, how do I get more traffic to my website? Social media. I can say that in two words, but that is a huge answer. Social media means Twitter, Facebook, Facebook ads, YouTube, Vine, all of these things about social networks, social media. If that's the answer to get traffic, social media, then this is all easy, right? No, because you need to know as much as possible about your own company in order for you to market it the best. McDonald's and Chipotle and Nike and all of these huge companies are very, very famous and profitable because they have a very strong marketing aspect. They have a very strong um, profile. They reach the right audience. The people that shop at Payless are probably a little bit looking for something different than the people that shop at the Nike store. They both want running shoes but one wants to pay less, and the other one wants the name brand, perhaps, because maybe it's quote-unquote better. Maybe the Payless shoes are as good as the Nike shoes, but because Nike has such a strong brand and presence, it attracts people to its brand. We need to think of some aspects of that in the bigger concepts of search engine optimization, because what are we optimizing for? If we're simply saying, I want more traffic, well, why would you get more traffic? And that's what one of these assignments is about. In this assignment, we're going to define what your company is, what it does. And again, I use the keywords of uh, company and such, but this can apply to a nonprofit organization. This can apply to a, um, 
you know, an animal shelter, this can apply to a restaurant, this can apply to you as a person trying to get a job as a social media marketer. So I'm going to say the, the concept over and over of company, but it can apply to anything you're doing online. The actual assignment is you're going to download that doc file and then you're going to rename it with your last name and then you're going to fill out these the answers, the questions on it, which we'll see in a moment. Basically, fill in the cover page, the second page. We'll go into details right now. You want to print a copy for yourself. You don't turn that in. But you want a copy at this starting point of it because things might change. You're going to complete that document template. You're going to send me an email as an attachment. Add that document with the subject and send it to me before the deadline. Do you want another PDF or save as a document? Same as the doc is fine. That way I can edit it directly if I need to. What I'm actually talking about then is, if I go back to Blackboard, is the template. That's the one where you're really going to, to, to do some work. So let's uh, let's go back here and uh, that, that doc file, that word file, uh, I think you can just click it. Yeah, if you just click it, then it'll try to download. It's a Word document, so then click it so that it opens up in Word. This should also open up on the Mac, if you've got a Mac. So click on the company profile template file so that it downloads and then select to open it. Let's open it and let's look at it and discuss it. As I said, if I get hired, what I need to do for a company is I need to know everything that I can about that company so that I can do a good job for them. You are going to be your own client right here. You are going to know about your own company and do as best as you can for yourself. All right, so here then what I have is the first page, the cover page, your company name plus your name. Okay, if you don't have an idea for a company name, now is a great time to think about it. You are a company as soon as you decide to be a company. You don't need to go to City Hall and get an official license. You can start to be a company right now. For the full proper setup and such, yes, you should go to City Hall and get your uh, business license and register with the IRS and all of that stuff. Yes, that's ideal. But you don't need to do that for this assignment or to start off with. Uh, getting a business license, I think it's like $45 and it lasts like three years or five years or something. So it's a very doable, attainable thing. Question? If you were to register like your own domain name, uh, would that count as no. also owning the name of your business as well? The domain name is actually separate, unfortunately. Uh, so if you have a company, if you have a family name, a family business for 20 years, and now you decide to build a website, there's no guarantee that that name will be available, that it hasn't been taken by someone else, and kind of vice versa. You might have built a website and had it for a few years, and then decided to go to City Hall and register as a business. It might have already been taken, unfortunately. Now the other two that didn't raise your hands. What were you guys saying? Really? When I when I set it up a few years ago, it was for like three or five years or something. Did I don't know if they changed I it. I, just paid my uh -huh. I think that's for the name. Uh -huh. Register the business name of your company, uh -huh. not for the actual license of where you're going to operate. So, for example, I have a law office in Chula Vista, mm -hmm. and to operate in Chula Vista, Chula Vista wants me to get the business license. Oh, okay. It's different from the registering the name, yeah. so that your competitor can't copy your name. Mm, okay. Very good. Thanks. Thanks for that insight. Let me write it down right here. If you guys didn't quite hear, so we have a uh, business license, and then we have because I always get those details mixed up. We have fictitious name, uh, also known as DBA. Fictitious name, DBA, doing business. Online search. Way to do it. It's uh, I I always forget it. I just go to Google and I put uh, San Diego County FBN search, and I arrive at it. And then that way, you're able to look up an available FBN at the same time that you're looking for an available domain. 
There's also a company out there that will do it for you. Yeah. So you can just search San Diego FBN site, fictitious business name. So yes, they are, they are slightly different. One is the business license where it's to operate, I guess, a physical location. And then the name of it, your DBA doing business as or fictitious business name, uh, that's a little bit different. So if I'm going to create, I'm going to invent a company called Victor's Web Designs um, dot cool, you know, that can be my my name. Does I don't have to go through the whole process of getting the business license and such, but that name, um, that way we'll, you're a little bit more legitimate and like I said you could get started and be a business like just by saying you are one and that's fine but for the most uh, protection under the law and the most legitimate way to do it you do have to do this and you can do it in person you can do it on the website for this assignment you don't have to be that complex it's asking for a company name you can just put your name you can think of a clever name maybe it's taken it doesn't matter for this assignment and again, if you're just starting off with all of these things about web design and such, you maybe didn't really think about it. It's a good idea to start to, to think about it. And as you progress, you might you want to make it more legitimate. So you're going to add your company. Pizza Paz Pizza. Yeah, totally copyrighted. Your company name, you're going to add your name, you're going to put the date, because this can change. As you learn more of this stuff in this class or through other resources, this stuff might change. There'll always be a fresh copy of it available on Blackboard, but uh, this is the one that's going to be due. You could put today's date or whatever, or the day that it's due. doesn't matter. It's just for you to know that this is like version one of it with this date, and then if you decide to change it next month, or next semester, hopefully what you're learning today, you keep applying it, you can do that. So next page. Various questions, things to think about, to answer. Ultimately, anything that you learn in this class, really, you could say, what's the point of my grade? And what's the point? I got all of these A's. Great. But what's the point in the real world? Hopefully I'm teaching you things that are going to be useful to you in the real world besides that A on your transcript. These are things that you're going to apply for your business. So it will behoove you to be as detailed and thoughtful as possible to answer these questions. So company name. You can simply write Victor's Web Design. Great. A plus. But in the real world, that's not enough. What is the name of your company? If you don't have one, you can create one for this assignment. Remember, however, it will be used throughout the semester. For example, my web design company will be vic.co, pronounced vic.co, and it comes from my name. So if you were to have seen this name right here, you might have thought of different ways that it could be pronounced. And it's important that my company is pronounced vic.co because it's my company, it's my identity. It's pronounced Nike, not Nike even though that was how it was pronounced by the ancient Greeks. It's Nike nowadays. And so simply answering my, putting my answer vic.co with no explanation that that's how it's pronounced or written or that it comes from my name or that it was my grandfather's nickname for me, that's not a good of enough answer. You have to be specific. So even little things like that, when you write here, a couple sentences as best as you can, not just one single word answer for yourself. If you want an A with a single word answer, fine. Enjoy that GPA. But in the real world, what does a GPA matter? Tagline. Think of one sentence that makes people understand what your company is about. Think of the famous taglines uh, that you grew up with. Why do they stick? Your tagline could also be a concise statement about your company. For example, Vic.co, a great company for your great website. Obviously, a tagline is hard to think about. Uh, you have a week to do it for this assignment. It doesn't have to be perfect, but in the real world, I'm loving it. Cost millions, if not tens of millions of dollars to figure out. Uh, McDonald's spent millions of dollars in a room full of geniuses to figure out I'm loving it. So did Nike. Just do it. All of these big companies spend a lot of time and effort and money to figure out these taglines, these slogans, these catchphrases for marketing to catch your attention and we don't have that amount of time or money but think about it a bit like this if you've got a company 
with a name that doesn't make much sense on its own. Vic.co. I don't know what they do at all. If it was victorsdesigns.co, that gives me a little bit better idea, but I'm still, is it interior design? Is it web design? Is it graphic design? The word design means a lot of things. What's that? Clothes designer. Design doesn't mean that much on its own. So my tagline better help explain that too. Vic.co or vicdesigns.co, the best clothes for the best person, right? Whatever sort of tagline that helps further explain your company, especially when you've got an esoteric name. Esoteric means no one knows what it means. So if no one knows what your name means, have a good tagline. If you've got victorsbakery.com, okay, then you can get fun or creative or interesting with that tagline. Family-owned bakery in Eastlake since 1989. Very to the point, works just fine. Maybe it's longer than the classic, just do it and such, but you're not at that level that a simple phrase is going to define you. Um, you do want to take the time to think about how that tagline, that slogan, can help solidify the concept of your company. Because that's something, many of these things here are things that we're going to use on our biography on my website, on Twitter, on YouTube. If that's all consolidated into one document, I don't have to then keep thinking of what I'm going to write in each profile once we get to the Twitter assignment, the YouTube assignment, the Snapchat assignment. It's all consolidated in this document. Sometimes they call it a Bible. All the knowledge is right here about your company. This one and the other documents. There's a little spot for you to write some about information, about the company, about yourself, whatever it is you're trying to do online. Write a paragraph about your company. Who founded it? What is it about? When did you get the idea for it? Where was it founded? Why are you in business? How will you make the company? Notice those are the classic who, why, what, when, where, why, how. You know, the classic journalism questions. The more of these you answer, the better. Again, all for yourself. Because uh, you're your own company, you're your own product, you're your own boss. The better you can answer all of these, the more it'll help you throughout the semester applying SEO. Some things to think about. You can maybe have other ideas. You can add to them, sure. If you answer two or three of them, fine. If you answer all five, even better. An About Us page is something that is important also for SEO for a company because spammers don't do these things. Spammers, spam sites are just there to steal your money with fake Rolex watches. They don't have uh, relevant content that the search engines can analyze and really rank them well. Uh, so an about page is going to be a screen of content that the search engines can use to help find you. If part of my who founded us is a couple sentences with some keywords that people are searching for, we could get found. And again, we'll have an assignment later focusing more on what are keywords and all of that. We've got mission statement. Write something that lets potential customers know what's in it for them. Why would they hire you? For example, Vic.co exists to bring the most beautiful web design to the most discerning clients in Southern California. Our designs will make everyone take notice. So my mission statement could easily make Vic.co will make websites. The end. That's fine. But I've got Vic.co exists to bring the most beautiful web design to the most discerning clients in Southern California. We're being specific. We're doing websites. Ours will be beautiful. It's for discerning, discerning clientele, you know, not cheapskates. It's going to be eye-catching, and we're focusing on Southern California, because we can make websites for anyone in the US, in the world. We want to focus on Southern California as a market. I can get a lot of inspiration on what to write by looking at the websites of companies if you poke around on most companies on their website somewhere you're gonna find a lot of these kinds of answers either in an about page or oftentimes perhaps in an investors page especially if they're a big famous company stock info year in review 
helpful links, contacts, student zone. I just ch picked one on random. Brands, the company about, careers, our company. Some make it easier to use than others. <clears throat> What's that? Maybe. Let's see. A little bit of info. Largest beverage company refreshing consumers with more than 500 sparkling and still brands or company, etc., etc. So again, you can just browse around. I chose one at random. Yeah, to show you here the long arm of Coca-Cola. They're behind Coca-Cola, Powerade, Aquarius, Bon Aqua, Schweppes, Dasani, Fanta, everywhere. Fuse Tea, Gold mm. Peak, Minute Maid. So the point of that is research some of your favorite companies. Look up uh, Microsoft or Nintendo or Apple or Samsung or whatever. Look them up, go to their website, poke around on the About screen or the Investor screen, and you're going to get ideas about how they write and what they write for reaching their audience. Because as we'll talk about it later, it's not a good idea to try to reach everyone. Even Coca-Cola knows they're not going to have a very good chance of, re of reaching like the, the health nuts. Uh, the people that are like really into health, they're not going to want to touch Coca-Cola products as, you know, 1,000 grams of sugar, whatever. Uh, so, but they're going to create a Powerade products for that audience that wants to be healthy, quote unquote, and drink that product. I wouldn't drink Coca-Cola. It's got so much sugar. Read the label of your Powerade. It's like the same. And so they are targeting an audience, Ayataka. I never heard of them, but they're probably focusing on an audience that would respond to them. And then over here, too, um, Iro, Irohos, Irohos, or Ilohas. Um, they've got it, uh, something for everyone, is what I'm saying. You're going to target an audience. We'll talk about that and think about it a little bit more later. But that's the point of this about us stuff, about this mission statement, about these values. Who's going to care about your company? What are some keywords that your company believes in? For example, orderliness, teamwork, discipline, efficiency, creativity, etc., tolerance. You can click on that link to get more examples. Because these companies, these big, famous, billion-dollar companies, better believe they have stuff like this. They have you know, a room where all of their mission statement is tacked up to the wall and everyone has to memorize it and believe it so that they can put out the best product for yourself. You're going to think about these keywords about what your company believes in because that's going to help you find that audience that will want to hire you. So again, let's say I am a bakery. I want people to come and buy my cookies. Well, if my Keywords and such are about, you know, respect and tradition and authenticity. I want to get found by people that want authentic cookies, traditionally baked goodies. You know, these keywords that people want to search for, believe in, want to buy. And if my company is an example of that and, and does it in an authentic way on Twitter, I I'm going to post on Twitter, I'm going to post a picture of a great cupcake and write a brilliant little sentence using these keywords and then a link to buy it. So it's all tied together. What we're doing here, SEO, search engine optimization, and SEM, search engine marketing. This is the marketing aspect. We can develop our keywords and use our keywords, SEO, but the SEM concept is how do I reach an audience? How do I market to an audience? And we will see that we need to think of reaching a particular audience because no, not everyone's going to care about your product. I am a realtor. Everyone wants to buy a house, but I'm going to focus on being a realtor in Imperial Beach or Ocean Beach or Pacific Beach, beach communities. I want to find an audience that wants a beach side home. Even though I could sell homes in Hamul, but I want to sell homes to people that want a beachfront property. I need to develop a personality. Think of your company as a person. How would he or she communicate? How would he or she behave? 
For example, Vic.co's communication is spontaneous and friendly. Vic.co is happy to talk to new clients and share the latest in web design. So if you look up Twitter, uh, if you look up Coca-Cola's tweets, if you look up Nike's tweets, if you look up Chipotle's tweets, or Facebook or YouTube, whatever, they all have a particular style of how they communicate there, trying to find an audience. The style that they communicate is in an effort to try to find the audience that wants their product. So if I have a uh, CPA doing my taxes, and I see that he, he conducts his company online in a very millennial kind of way with a lot of slang in the tweets and uh, acronyms and all of that, I would feel, is this person really serious to do my taxes? I would want a serious person to do my taxes. And based on the personality I'm seeing online, that person doesn't seem serious, which may or may not be true, but it's the perception that's also important. So the point of this, is your company friendly? Is it stoic? Is it professional? Or is it uh, you know, uh, fun and friendly? I don't want to take my kid to that daycare center where all of their communication is very stoic. It sounds strict, sounds mean. I want my child to enjoy daycare. So that personality would then be the opposite. It's too strict, it's too stoic. It doesn't fit with what the company is, a daycare. And then fundamentals. List the company address if you've got one or make one up a website if you've got one. You have one at the moment. If you did the assignment of WordPress, you've got some website.wordpress.com. And later on, when we talk about actually setting up our site in GoDaddy, for example, we'll have a website, so this will be updated at some point. <clears throat> Any contact info, like what is your email address to get in contact, and some advice here. If you've got victorcamposlawyer dot, I mean, at gmail.com compared to victor at victorlawyer dot com, which is more professional? The second, second one. Any crazy person can make a Gmail account. Any crazy person can make a Yahoo account, a Cox email account, an AT&T account. Um, anyone can make an email from any of these free services. Legitimate people have an email of their website because that's not free. Gmail is free, Yahoo is free, Hotmail is free, but victorlawyer.com is not free. I had to pay <clears throat> Bluehost, you know, $80 a year. And then I've got my own professional email there. If I'm, you know, info at vdesigns.biz versus versus vdesigns at yahoo.com. Again, the professional one is the one that's got my domain name. And we'll have an activity on that later. But think about that. So you might not have one at the moment, which is fine. This can all be this part right here can be theoretical in that I'm going to have this kind of email address. I'm going to have this domain name. Notice I say also any social media. If you're at the point where you've created some Twitter account or YouTube or whatever for your business, you can add that. If you haven't, then write down some examples of what you want to do. I want to use Twitter for my business. I want to use Vine for my business. I want to use Snapchat for my business. That's fine to write it also. We'll figure out the details as the course goes on. This is part one of the assignment. Remember to fill in everywhere where it asks you, like, put your last name there. If you leave it last name, you didn't pay attention. You want to fill in everywhere where it's been, you know, brackets here. You want to put your stuff there. If you don't complete a section, you don't get full credit. Um, but this is part one of it, the company profile. Any questions on any of this so far? Again, my company would do a version of this for any client that hired us so that we can do the best job for them. If you go back to Blackboard, 
The second half of the assignment number three is the marketing strategy. A little quick explanation again. But basically, it's telling you, fill in the template. It's due at the same time next week. Let's go directly to the template. Marketing strategy template dot word. Go ahead and download that one and open it. Some more things for you to fill in. Again, company name, your name, the date, etc. Some more questions being asked of you. The more detailed you are, the better for yourself. The question, what do you want to accomplish? You have a presence online for a reason. Notice I said presence. I didn't necessarily say you have a website. You have a presence. You could run your whole empire off of eBay, off of Etsy, off of Facebook, sure. What is You have an online presence for a reason. Are you trying to sell something? Are you trying to build awareness? Are you artistic and want people to appreciate your work? Do you have a group you belong to that needs more members? Take a moment to write about what you want to accomplish with your online presence. So, starting idea here. Vic.co wishes to create a powerful social media presence because we want to interact with existing customers and through word of mouth reach new customers. We want to connect with people on Instagram in a very visual way. So I'm saying here, we want to create a lot of social media buzz. We want to use social media a lot. I didn't say which one's here, but I might have said it on the first document. And what I want to do on social media is to get new customers, because I'm going to need new customers to make them websites to stay in business, and through word of mouth, so referrals, maybe get Yelp reviews, Maybe through the customers that I have worked with, I'm going to get from them more customers. I want to reach new customers. And I want to use Instagram. Because web design is a visual thing, I want to use one of the popular visual social networks, Instagram. I want to post photos of web design. I want to use Instagram maybe to make little videos about web design, reach an audience, get famous on Instagram, get traffic to my website, and ultimately get hired to do web design. That's what I'm trying to accomplish, to get hired for web design. If you simply have an answer such as, you know, make money, well, that's not detailed enough for you. What else are you going to do? How are you going to do that? What are you trying to do? Why are you trying to um, accomplish that? You're going to reach this accomplishment when you target an audience. It's important to focus on a target audience. It's nice to say that everyone would be interested in my product or my cause or my group, but it just isn't true in the real world. Who are the people that would like to know about your product? What are their age ranges, gender, economic group, musical style, etc.? In short, who would care about your product? The people who want to hire Vic.co are people that are trendy, but know what they want. They are people that are in their 30s, who are successful, own their own company, need a website, and know the value of web design. It's a very dense answer there. I can make websites for anyone in the US, anyone in the world, anyone in San Diego. But what I want to do is I want to go to those that are in their 30s, they own their own business. Uh, obviously, if they're older or younger, I have to decide, do I want to take them on as a client? If I'm trying to grasp at all straws, you know, I miss some of them. If I target an audience, I have a better chance of reaching that audience. That's why we saw in Coca-Cola, they've got a product for everyone. That one Coca-Cola product is not going to cut it for everyone. But Coca-Cola will, Diet Coke, Coke Zero, that tea, and this one, and that one, and Powerade, they've got a thing for everyone, a target audience. So those that are in their 30s, successful, and know the value of web design, and I mean that literally and figuratively. Figuratively that they understand a good website is going to get them more customers or more views or more fame but literally in that it doesn't cost $200 to make a website. 
it doesn't cost five hundred dollars to make a website a good website is a thousand dollars two thousand dollars five thousand dollars especially the really complex ones so I laugh whenever I see those ads uh, you can make your own website for two hundred fifty dollars yeah it's gonna be a cookie cutter website that so does your competitor have because they also cheaped out and you've got a not very functional site that doesn't do everything that you need but if you really wanted to do something it's just fifty dollars more and if you need this another fifty dollars more and another and then suddenly you're at you know hundreds or thousands of dollars when you thought it was only a two fifty dollar website you're not gonna get serious good quality results for you know under a thousand dollars that's so minimal nowadays and so my audience is that I could make a website for any mom and pop shop, but oftentimes they are struggling with budgets. And they're going to try to lowball it and say, can you maybe make it for $500 and we'll give you some free stuff? No, because free stuff doesn't pay the rent. And so, yeah, I might have to say no to companies. And as a starting person, I might find that very difficult. I need everyone. I need to get hired by everyone so I can build a portfolio, so I can put, so I can pay my rent. And perhaps as a beginner, I will take on all comers and build a portfolio, but then eventually I can get discerning and really target an audience that, will, that won't balk at these prices because they know, yeah, it costs that amount of money. And this is the thing that always gets me. Uh, many of us can believe that this thing in my pocket is worth $400, $500, $800, this technology. But people don't believe that a website is $5,000. It's just things on a screen. It's pixels. It's pictures. It's not five thousand dollars. Of course it is. It takes time and effort to design. It takes education, and it's going to bring you customers if it's a good website. So of course it's worth that much. Just like this physical thing. Question. I've worked on not to show off, but I've worked on a website that was ten thousand dollars, <laughs> and um, they're not always always there. Sometimes you have to set a little bit less. But yes. That all, yes. Not too much, only about 15 years in my case. But it really depends on your education and your portfolio. Um, it's that if you've got the content to back it up, that's when you can ask for those prices. If you're just starting off, twenty dollars an hour to work on a project is feasible you know two hundred dollars to make a website is feasible starting off but very quickly uh, you'll see that that's not as much to really work with in the real world you'll have to do you know eight websites to really be doing well at those lower prices and as a beginner perhaps yes you have to go with those beginner prices but as you get the education and the experience it is very common to be charging a hundred dollars an hour to work on a website. Um, I think everyone can get to that point with the education and the experience. And sometimes it's a catch twenty-two. I've got the experience, I've got the education, but I don't have the experience. No one will hire me. You might have to get hired to do simpler kinds of jobs to start off with, to build a nice-looking portfolio, to then have something to command higher prices. <clears throat> That's why I, at this point, I can make that target audience. But if you, have you heard the phrase, um, dress for the job you want? If one day I want to become a doctor, I'm going to dress and compose myself for that. Uh, if, I, if I don't have that as a goal, I might not reach it. So that's why we've got a target audience that we're trying to get. If we, if, we don't ha if we don't know who we're going for, we're going to get anyone rather than the best customers. Do you have any aspirational competition? It's good to have role models, both in life and in business. Is there a business you see that makes you think, I want to be like that? Or a business that makes you think, I want to do that, but better? List the company, person, brand, or etc. that you feel is in competition with you, but that you would like to emulate. Why do you want to emulate them? 
Dick.co feels that XY Designs is our aspirational competition because they have a large clientele and their designs are unique and modern. We let me show you tell you a real world example. One of the clients of my company, I believe I mentioned it before, is Aquiestex Coco, which is a Mexican food restaurant in Chula Vista that has now expanded to a new location in LA, and the plans are for another location. Um, uh, Las Vegas eventually. They're doing really well. They wouldn't have gotten to that point without having um, goals. And so when we started to work with them and we started to redo their branding because their old designs and website and such weren't that good, uh, they needed to go to the next level. So we asked the owner, who do you feel is doing it right in the, in the world of restaurants and who are you trying to be like or be better than who are you inspired by and he said well uh, I'm inspired by Phil's barbecue mm -hmm. how many of you heard of Phil's barbecue oh, yeah. okay there you, here you go they're awesome they've got this fame of being one of the best or the best barbecue joints in San Diego now this client is a Mexican food restaurant but he's saying he wants to be like Phil's barbecue classic American cuisine barbecue but this is Mexico City style barbecue, barbacoa de borrego, so lamb barbecue. It's different spaces. They're both restaurants, but one is Mexican barbecue, one is American barbecue. You might think, well, how do they how do they relate? They're different food. He says, you know, Phil's barbecue, they've got a line out the door, they've got a little sign up on top here, 40 minute wait from this point, like a ride at Disneyland. Mm -hmm. So he wants to have that. He wants to have a, a, a people waiting out the door to get into his restaurant. On the weekends, he does. There's a list outside the door. Sign into the list. You might get a table in half an hour or something. Throughout the week, not as full, but on the weekends, yes. But you start somewhere. He wants to have seven days a week, line out the door, like Phil's Barbecue. So that's his aspirational competition, not the exact. He could have easily have said, Taco Bell. I want to be like Taco Bell one day. Maybe not the best food, but the most famous, quote-unquote, Mexican food. Um, and so he's trying to be like someone above him to get to that point, to aspire to, to reach that point eventually. Very close to there. Yeah, they're on, they're on Broadway, a little bit closer to Broadway and kind of Palomar. Broadway and Naples around there. Close-ish to the Costco on Broadway. Yes. Yeah, that could happen definitely at bars and such. Um, and honestly, to some degree, popularity breeds popularity. So if it looks like our restaurant is popular, uh, other people will say, What's going on there? Let's go check it out. And then it'll create more popularity. But that might not work. And you will see that result in the cash register. We're not actually pulling in all that money that it looks like we're pulling in. So this way that I'm saying it here uh, is, of course, to be the truest to yourself and not use some of these sorts of you know tricks to get results. Um, later on, when we get into social media, we're going to see we can use social media for free or we can use social media for pay. We can pay Twitter. We can pay Facebook. We can pay YouTube to reach more people. And we can reach a good amount of people for free. And guess what? We can reach a better amount of people if we pay. But if I don't, if I'm morally object, objective to pay, if I morally object to pay for Twitter, you don't have to. You can get by with the free stuff, as what we'll be teaching. But the paid aspect of it does have some value. And honestly, our company for clients, we mix the two. Uh, if we need to get a lot of activity quickly, paying $10 on Facebook reaches a lot of people. Paying one dollar, when I have zero likes on Facebook, I can pay one dollar and I'm going to reach a hundred people. Not that I'm buying likes or anything like that, none of that shady stuff. I am paying Facebook to have my content reach more people than I currently can right now. I've got two likes, I pay one dollar, I can reach a hundred people. Maybe 
seven of those hundred people actually buy my product, seven out of a hundred is, is a great return on investment with one dollar. Obviously, if I pay ten dollars, twenty dollars, a thousand dollars, I'll reach even more people, but it's not in my budget. Question. So on Facebook, because you'd like to talk to, is it the same as uh, G, uh, AdSense where you can set off like a geographical area? It's yeah. both the same concept, yes, but they're separate because one's Facebook, one's Google. Yeah. But it's. Yeah, you like on Facebook. Like yeah. Google. Yeah, you can segment it. You can say, I'm going to pay 10 bucks to reach this audience of this age and this location. I'm going to pay 10 bucks to reach this other age range and this other location with a different ad. You can totally target it, and it's very effective. We'll touch on it, but we'll, we'll be working mostly with the free stuff. That's, 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 that's a lot cheaper than AdSense. Yeah, Facebook is really taking on Google on every front. Uh, for example, Facebook... AdSense is like a <laughs> Uh, Facebook is incorporating, for example, a lot more video. They're totally taking it to YouTube. Uh, so those are the two big ones in, in charge of everything. And so if Facebook starts to be um, effective in that aspect, it's got to then change AdSense. It's then got to say that we're in trouble, let's lower it, let's make it better, because we've got these guys on our heels. We had a mission statement, which tells the world where you stand. And now here is a vision statement, which is which tells the world where you're going. Write a statement that makes predictions about what you want to accomplish as a company. Vic.co will be known for providing eye-catching web design for San Diego's most elegant restaurants. My mission statement, which is what I'm doing right now. Right now, we're a web designer doing this, this, and that. Vision statement is we want to be this eventually. You could put in a time, a goal. In five years, Vic.co will be known for providing eye catching, etc. You notice we've got that target right there. Restaurants in San Diego. Elegant restaurants in San Diego. So that's our vision. That's our goal for the future. The, vi the mission statement is where we are now, what we're doing now, and the mission and the vision is where we're going, what we're doing in the future. And then the last one is the USP, the unique selling proposition. What do you want to provide your customers that no one else can? What makes you stand out from the rest? How do you uniquely solve their problems? Vic.co is based in San Diego, and many from our team graduated from Southwestern College, San Diego State, UCSD. We therefore know the culture. We can create compelling websites that cater to the San Diego companies. Again, we can make a website for anyone in the US. We're going to focus on San Diego-based companies because living here in San Diego, we know not to get on the 5 at 3 o'clock. And we grew up here. We know the culture here. We know, you know that it's a miracle when we get rain in February. And we, we, we know San Diego, so therefore we can target an audience of San Diego. Um, again, I could make a website for someone in Portland, but that's not my target. Uh, as I f specify and focus on an audience and develop this mission and the keywords and the personality and all of that, I can better reach my goal. Because I, I forgot to say here, if I back up a little bit on the target audience, one of the techniques that a big company does is to create a persona. A persona is a fictional person. A fictional person to market to. The companies, the big companies, spend time to invent a person. Janet Smith lives in Portland and has this job and graduated from Seattle College, which is not in Portland, but this person exists and that's who we're trying to market to. That is obviously much more work than you need to do for this class. But that would be that we actually create a biography, a, a dossier of a real person, fictionally, so that when we are on Twitter, would Janet re respond to this tweet? We're hitting all the targets that Janet is defined by when, you know, um, Microsoft or Apple is trying to sell you their product 
they have all of this figured out. Love them or hate them, Apple is one of the most profitable, famous, successful companies in humanity. And I'm a Samsung person, I'll die by Samsung, but Apple is one of the most profitable. There's one, there's one error there. You said one. Yes. It is the most. At the moment, their stock price is a little bit low this year, so we'll see how it goes. Yes. But was it not Microsoft who bailed them out? See, everybody forgets that. Every, you can ask Apple people, they'll tell you, no, Microsoft didn't help us. Even though we were bankrupt, we filed, put the paperwork in, and they bought $165 million worth of our stock in mm -hmm. 1997. That is very true. That's true. Some of the workers at Apple were going over to Microsoft to try to get a job. All for God's now. That's the power of marketing. They've created a, uh, a persona that, uh, that uh, Steve Jobs built it with his own two hands in his garage. You're forgetting Steve Jobs, and you're forgetting the other guy that I'm, that I'm forgetting. Steve Wozniak? Steve Wozniak. No, the other guy. Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak, and another guy. We're forgetting another the third guy. guy. Is the bad and go buy products? One of those guys. Same thing with Microsoft. Everyone has the allure that it was Bill Gates, that he built it in his own backyard. No, he, he and Paul Allen did it. I thought he bought DOS he did. and changed the name. Yeah, it was, P, it was PC DOS. Was from no, uh, that was, was Apple. That was Apple. Wow. 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 They all steal from each other. The point <laughs> is... The point well, is... They said it wouldn't work. The point is that <laughs> we have they here... Said it wouldn't work. We have a persona that we are targeting, and these big companies, they do that. They have who is the person that we're trying to sell this product to. And if we wanted to go that far, we could. We could create personas. Here I'm asking very basically, think about who wants to buy your product or donate to your nonprofit or see your paintings. Whatever you're trying to do online, someone is going to care. If you can define them, you can reach them. All of these questions from this one, as well as the company profile, is the current homework assignment. It's going to be due a week from today. You want to fill it out, keep it as a Word document, send it to me via email by the deadline, which is 11 p.m. next week, and that's assignment number three. We're going to end the main lecture in a moment. We'll have a little lab time if you want to start working on it. Any general questions? Not controversial ones. <laughs> That one was a few thousand dollars uh, because it needed a whole new rebranding. The original site was, was very basic. It, it hadn't been upgraded to WordPress and such, and so it needed to be de designed new for WordPress with new graphics and logos and such. I forget the exact amount, but it was a few thousand dollars. And um, a, a client we just landed also, they're from Australia, but have an office here in San Diego. It was also in that range. So what can I say? What's the average range? I can't say because it depends. One company, because Texcoco needed a shopping cart, that's always going to be more expensive because you need products and a database and all of that. This other one doesn't need a database, but they need it to be very visually good looking. So I can't really say, but there's, there's a range, if you want to think about it this way, $20 an hour to $100 an hour. And that's a huge range. But that comes from the experience in the portfolio when you're getting into the business. Yes? Can you um, use Shopify You can. Uh, we teach a class here, CIS 256. We have CIS 123, which is you know part one of web design. And then part two is CIS 256. Uh, and that one's uh, the shopping cart class. It depends on the instructor. So who's ever teaching it uh, makes that decision. But when I taught it, it was WordPress with shopping cart. I don't know how it is at the moment. Yes? I just want to make a point. Yeah. I think sure. you're saying like, all these websites cost all this money. But I think the important fact that we need to learn in these classes, you're giving us the skills that we need to create a website so we don't have to pay all the time. Within the amount of time that we have, I try to give as much as possible, and I'm always recommending other classes. Uh, the Dreamweaver mm -hmm. class is on during the day, the 123 class. They're talking about a little bit more detail in WordPress. 
Um, we've got other classes. CIS 152, which is code, and um, all of our other classes. So I, I try to do as much as possible because I do it in the real world. I'm happy to teach it and give it to a new generation of people. And uh, yeah, it can be expensive, but if you do it yourself, you'll, you'll be able to save money and do a good job. But sometimes it is complicated, and I do point it out when it is and give advice and all of that. But thank you for that. So this is the assignment, and um, we'll end the main lecture at this point. It's available on Blackboard. If you'd like to print it out, you can, although you won't really need to because you need to fill it in. It's due a week from today, and it'll be worth 10 points, both of them together.